first, right? You're going first, Chris. All right. Uh, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm Kajer in chat. I'm not usually here very often. You'll be seeing me in the nerd community. Uh, I'll be writing some serial stuff for you guys. Um, all of the community stuff will be happening there. I'll be playing Forrest today, the mad haiku muscle man. Um, and that's really all you need to know about him. You'll find out the rest as we go. It'll be deep. Nice. I'm Sarah. Um, I'm a blogger and gamer. You can find me at Sarah P. That's me on Twitter. Um, and also, I am going to be doing content editing and contribution for the nerd community, which is like this close to taking off. So we're excited about that. Um, today, I'm going to be playing Lila Vargas, who is a journalist on the um, riverboat today. And she's trying to get the story. So let's see what goes on. Hey guys, I'm, I'm Hal. Um, I run aboardtheairship.com, which is my podcast, blog, and review website. Um, I will be contributing into the nerd community as um, with blog, podcast, probably one shots. Um, I am running tonight's game, and they have to make it from, I'm pretty sure I put them New Orleans to Memphis without dying. Five days. Let's see what happens. We are all going to die. If I don't make it to day three, I am uh, going to cry on camera. I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. I am Saranus. Uh, you can find me on uh, twitter.com slash Saranus and youtube.com slash Saranus. I recently was on uh, twitch.tv slash Saranus, but now my desktop got fried because lightning bolts happen. Oh, no. <laughs> and... Uh, I am going to be playing our uh, our <laughs> federal agent named Harold Miles. I am the law. And go ahead, Tack Yumi. <laughs> I'm Yumi. I am a mod in chat, and I do some behind the scenes shit. Um, I'm playing a character named Maggie Drake. Um, she's a washed up singer, basically, who's desperately trying to get back to being famous and flashy. Hey, and I am the Carpe DM. You can find me on Twitter at the Carpe DM. I've been running one shots and playing in one shots and generally being a horrible person. I will be playing Keith Benson, who's a bartender from Chicago. Uh, apparently I'm rich, even though nobody's been coming to my bar. So. <coughs> hopefully I won't go crazy. Oh, during Prohibition. A bartender during Prohibition. That, that is right. They're set currently in 1920s directly after Prohibition has been, um, stated. So. Without further ado, let's get you guys to the right page. You guys should be entering the showboat. This is a really big map. Um, this is going to be your home for the next five days. Cool. Um, you have already had your little tokens placed in each of your rooms. I used your character profile picks for those. And um, or as you've been told, day one, you have been welcomed aboard. This is the Queen's Water, and um, the captain will be giving an official speech later this evening. This is your first, last, and only chance to explore the boat without any trouble. I will do that? just that. <laughs> oh, yeah, how do we know? <laughs> um, I tend to run things a little bit weird. I like to do a more sandbox thing with a lot of my games. All right. I am going to... There's an elevator on this thing? Holy cow. There is an elevator. It takes about um, a minute to two minutes to go between floors, but it is there. Um, okay, where's my bar? Um, you have the paddle wheel lounge directly down the hall. Oh, nice. That's convenient. That's why you're placed there. straight down there <laughs> to check to see if there's any alcohol. <laughs> oh, there is, but you have to know the right guy. And I'm missing one. Maggie, Leela, Forrest, Keith, and... Forrest, Keith. 
Who am I missing? Harold, there he is. Okay, I'm just getting the initiatives. Um, I'm getting the initiative total set up so that way we can just run fluidly from here to end. If I wanted to perform my haikus, where would I be doing that? You would be performing your haikus um, about center of the bar. If you can see the little circle, it's actually kind of hard to see. I want I'm going to change colors to something else. Let's go with. Yeah. Okay. You'd oh, be so sitting up about there and talking to the entire room. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to first, I'm going to go down there and kind of scout out the area, see what, uh, where I'll be performing. Um, they have already set out a stage for you. You are one of a lot of performers that are going to be performing over the next um, five-day trip. Um, the end goal for the ship is um, to get all the way to New Orleans, but you guys are getting off at Memphis, so you only have to last for five days around here. Um, so they have it set out for the entire trip. Um, there is a schedule of other performers to be here. Um, one of which you will know as um, Margaret. Which um, is the next singer that goes directly after you. Margaret a poet? Um, I actually didn't give Margaret a last name. Dang. Maggie, by the way. Maggie is going to be performing in the Mount Hood Lounge. Um, you're scheduled for day two, if I remember correctly. So you got the prime destination. Um, paddle, the Paddle Wheel Lounge is a little bit of a more, um, no offense, but lower class area. You guys are right next to the Paddle Wheel. It is loud. It is watery. It's a little bit of a mess. Meanwhile, the Mount Hood Lounge is dead front. Great place to drink beer, especially with a prohibition where you're not supposed to have it. All right. Sorry, uh, I meant uh, <clears throat> bottles of non-alcoholic beers. Apple juice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. Ginger all, ale. All apple juice. Ginger ale for all those gingers. Eyes uh, the bar, sits down, orders some food. And they will have it right out to you. This is one of the more um, fancy of the show boats. Mm -hmm. So they immediately will bring you um, mostly hors d'oeuvres, nothing big, because you have to be not, you have to have an appetite for dinner later that evening with the captain. Okay. So unless there's any specific questions you guys have about the layout of the ship, we can move on to the captain. Um, hold on. This Calliope Lounge up here, I think it's on the top deck. The Calliope Lounge? It, I don't yep. even know how to say that. So, <laughs> um, it has like an X over it, and I just didn't know if that was... Um, that symbolizes the canopy. Oh, okay. So it's, um, if you look at, if we went back to the other ship, it's kind of like a, it's a canopy hanging up. Okay. So it's an outdoor lounge. Gotcha. But it's got a tent over it so that if it starts raining, you're not going to get wet. That yep. doesn't help us if it starts raining blood, though. No. Nope. No, not much, no. <laughs> um, what's in the library? Um, the library is full of a lot of different books. Most of them seem to be about Egyptian culture and Egyptian archaeology. There seems oh. to be a lot of myth books um, going all the way up to the mid-Mediterranean. And it seems like it's mostly nonfiction research documents and pleasure reading. Interesting for a river boat in the middle of America. Boring. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Lila loves that crap, so. All right, that's all I have. Sounds like Lila needs more drinks. Possibly. I'm going to have uh, some water with my um, hors d'oeuvres or whatever. Um, you can definitely have water. Okay. I'm going to scan the bar for alcohol uh, to see if anyone's serving alcohol. Um, in fact, the bartender right in front of you would be. And he doesn't seem to really be worried about it. Um, Keith is one of three bartenders in this room. 
Um, uh -huh. Keith is the one in charge of the paddle wheel lounge. The rest of them just serve the drinks as needed. Most do like extra hands and serving boys, bus boys, stuff like that. Um, and and they don't seem bothered by the prohibition at all. Uh, all right, I'm gonna actually have to do my job. I'm gonna walk up to the bar, flash my FBI badge, and tell them, guys, I'm gonna have to uh, tell you guys to uh, stop serving the uh, the alcohol, and I'm gonna have to confiscate that. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. All we have here is uh, ginger ale. <laughs> ginger ale and apple juice. That whiskey does not look like apple juice. I don't see any whiskey. <laughs> that very specifically says uh, our maid. All right. Sir. It is literally labeled whiskey on the bottle. <laughs> Our made whiskey, which is actually apple juice. Um, you will note, Sirenus, that the other bartenders are watching you, and you are a lone FBI agent in a room full of people. Okay. You all want to get wasted. <laughs> Not that he's threatening you, but, you know, they won't find your body out here. That's all he said. <laughs> Sorry, this last 10 minutes in Call of <laughs> I have a Thompson <laughs> machine gun. I have a Thompson submachine gun. Let's do it. No. <laughs> no, it's in my room. I know. I probably wouldn't bring it out with me because it's so big. That's what she's she said. <laughs> but... <laughs> I heard you giggling, Sarah, and I was just like, "Nope, I'm not even. I'm not even touching that." He, he's talking. He's talking to the. That's what she said. Uh, no, um, so you appear to be out of character. Uh, I'll back off, considering. I'm happy to offer you some apple juice or uh, some water. I'm cool with the water. Happy to help you, sir. And everything gets a lot less tense in that room. Um, you hear the bell go off. That signals it's time for dinner to be served. Um, on the paddle boats, they have a lot of different bells to mean a lot of different things. Um, so the dinner bell is obviously dinner bell as the entire staff starts moving. Yeah. Dinner room is located there. Oh, I, <laughs> I can just jump on over. I, I don't care if you actually take the elevator stairs. I'm just saying dinner, but dinner is over there. Which way is the front? The front is towards this side, correct? Um, the captain's going to be standing here. Okay. So a speech on that spot. I'm probably in one of these back seats over here. The captain is not important <laughs> enough to actually have a token, though. So, I'm going to be that. sitting near, um, sitting near the edge, uh, so I can look out over the water, contemplate. Okay. This back um, table and survey everything. So the captain goes in front of the room. Um, and he starts the stereotypical captain speech where he starts discussing the different roles on the ship. You don't pull a weapon on the ship. You don't harm the civilians on the ship. You, um, This is a training vessel. Um, he lays out very clearly that there is no alcohol permitted by federal law on the ship. And any that you have found, you are bound by confidentiality for. Because he is the captain of this ship. Um, he introduced you guys to David, another NPC with no last name, who is the head of security. If you guys have problems, you can contact him. Um, he will introduce you to Macy, another one of the singers. Um, she is the newest of the newest. Um, he kind of glances over at Maggie when he says this and then looks away very quickly. Um, he will introduce you guys to Scott, or he goes by Scott. He's the lead bartender of the entire vessel. Um, he manages all the cider going in and out of the ship. Um, you guys will note that as he's talking, 
Most of the audience seems to be getting served drinks. You guys as well. Um, they have given everyone some of the whiskey from Southern Louisiana's parts. Um, and the captain is obviously preparing for a toast. I'm just staring at it. Uh, at my uh, whiskey. I'm going uh, to put it over to the side considering I'm still on the job. Okay. I'm not going to be drunk while so wait, are you saying that like the second you're off the clock, you're just like, fuck it, I don't care about this prohibition. <laughs> <laughs> I am on the job and holding my whiskey up proudly. Uh-huh. Um, so everyone that takes a shot with him, he um, starts talking about what the actual route is afterwards, sets his glass down. Um... He says you guys are going to be going from New Orleans to Barton Rouge and from Barton Rouge to Natchez. And he's about that far before you guys fall asleep. Um, as for the FBI agent that is still awake, you are actually going to get to roll some dice for me. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do I roll? Um, you are going to give me a sec to flip the page in the book to get the actual right word for it. Keep in mind, I haven't run 5.5 5 in forever. You know what? We'll do it that way. You remember that chart I was talking about earlier, the um, reference chart? Mm hmm Okay, you're going to look for your active characteristic of um, should be constitution. Eight, yeah. So you are going to roll a D100 for me. And you're trying to get below a 10. Nope. You are not below a 10. You fall unconscious. You get hit by a dart. Ah, uh, shit. Um, the thing you did see before you go down is the entire room of guests has fallen asleep. Hmm. Um, you do not uh, know where the... Uh, when they fall asleep, I'm going to uh, uh, suddenly get up uh, and before the dart hits me in the neck. I'm going to try to – I was going to go over to one of them to help him. And so you are going to be on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, face first. Um, face first on the floor. So we're going to move you about there. Where did you say the uh, the reference chart was? Because I didn't get that earlier. Um, the reference chart is on the sheet. What you're, you're not going to worry about actually reading the chart. Um, he was just asking. It's the resistance roll chart. What I'm going to do is I have a chart in the book. Um, it's this page. That is so much easier to read than what's on that sheet. Okay. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to ask you a number, and then I'm going to give you your target number out of that. Okay. Which is a million times easier than that chart. All right. So you guys do not know how long you slept. You wake up, and um, you find that the rest of the guests are gone. And you guys find – give me a sec to get them on the right layer – that where your dinner plates were, where the food was, there are now a bunch of snakes. A bunch of well, what? I hate snakes. I'm going back away from my snake. Ugh. Um. And as you look, you hear a rattle under the tables. Oh, oh, crap, God. they're rattlesnakes. <gasps> um, the ones on the table seem to have yellow, black, and red stripes on them. Motherfucker. The ones on the table are rattling. Um, you guys are all going to roll me a sanity roll. Already? Okay. Let's see. Welcome to Call of Cthulhu, guys. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> there it goes insane. No! Okay, we can be insane together. Yes. I need to switch my color back to something else. Um, let's put it on blue. Okay. If you pass the sanity check, you're only taking three points of sanity damage. If you fail, you are taking 11. It's so I go down to 57? Yep. It's okay. roll under your sanity. You have to roll under the sanity score, guys. 
and it'll tell you if you succeed or not. It'll say zero success or one success. <laughs> We're trying to get one success here, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I have switched my dice colors so that they are not going to show up as black blocks anymore. <laughs> the British ship is also going insane. Yep. And you guys see that the entire room is covered in them. They are crawling out from under the tables. Um, the snakes are going last in initiatives. Um, I'm going to go by the order I put you in the turn order box. So, Keith, first. Yeah. Uh, you can do me a favor. Can you give me your um, deck score? My deck score is 14. Okay, we're going to put that number in. Sweet. So, as we, as we recycle through, we're going to get you guys into the official... Um, initiative. I forgot completely about it before the stream. No problem. First. So I'm going to go first, and uh, the captain is no longer at the front of the room, right? From what you can tell, you guys are the only ones in the room. All right, well, let's fuck that. I am getting the fuck out of there. So in this game, we are considering each square to be about three yards. Um, that, that's how it transfers in for your gun range. Um, no, not three yards, one yard. Each square equals one yard. Okay. One yard equals three feet. There we go. Each square equals one yard, and that should be how it factors in for your gun range. Um, you guys have a base movement of five yards, if I remember correctly. Okay. Then one, two, three, four, five. I like that. It was a snake cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he moves. Forrest, can I have your deck score? Or is he still writing haikus? Um, no, Forrest will not be writing haikus. The deck score is... Well, I was writing haikus. Uh, dex is 14. Okay. Can I have Keith and Forrest both roll me D100 real fast? Wow, Chris. That, that, that made me happy. I don't have to move anyone. That works. Okay, Forrest, where are you going? Um, the snakes that are by me. Which ones are under the table and which ones are on the table? Um, consider all the snakes that are showing as on the table. Okay. Um, there's nobody else here. Right? Not from what you can tell. And um, each turn that goes by, more snakes show up from under the tables. Jeez. Can we stop breathing into the microphone? No. Um, who is it in the middle of the room? Because I can't see the names of people, sadly. Um, there's a bar to the left-hand side of your little box that zooms you in. Uh, yeah, but I can't see the names on the table. Uh, the middle is Maggie. Okay, uh, so because Forrest is a gentleman of the highest quality, he's actually going to go over... I, how, you can move, what, one square per... Um, you said five squares is a base movement? I was going to do five squares, yeah. Uh, how far can I move and take an action? Five squares. Okay, it's still full. Uh, yeah. Then I'm going to move over here. Um, and I'm going to take the table that the snakes are on here, and I'm going to try and throw it off the side of the boat over here. Why is okay. That? Um, for some reason, it's not letting me think it. I'm going to be throwing it over the side to the left. Um, just trying to get that pile of snakes away from Maggie. Okay, um, I will move the snakes. Um, I'm not actually going to make you roll for that because you're just picking up a table at this point. Covered in snakes, yes. And so the snakes are going to go flying over there. You can consider that table flipped. Excellent. First table of the evening officially flipped. <laughs> table. I think, I think Pirate Badgers beat you to it because she flipped a table when uh, she accidentally cro closed Chrome. Damn it. <laughs> 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 All 
Um, Forrest will look at Maggie and says, You have to get out of here. I was really hoping there was more to that. No, no. <laughs> and I don't get a like. Haiku is yet, okay? <laughs> no working. A haiku about snakes. <laughs> now I've got to write one. Thanks. <laughs> Like it's a compulsion. Like if you don't now, you're gonna burn slowly from the inside. <laughs> okay. So Leela is next up on initiative. Can I have your deck score? And please yeah, don't see. She's, she's a sixteen. Ask and you shall receive. That's all I've got to say to you. <laughs> Okay, and right. what is Leela doing? You are surrounded by three snakes. Jeez. Okay. Um, can I move and jump up on this table here? Yes. Okay, that's what I'll do. Okay, I'm going to actually make you roll a jump check on that one. Jump check! Okay, I'm going to find my sheet here. Jumping on tables is not something that a reporter usually does. Nope, that's true. Probably not in a skirt. Not in a skirt. Nope. So, okay. I do not have jump. Do I still roll the die next to where it says jump in the skills? Or do I default? Yes. Uh, after you, okay. Still roll the die. The, okay. the die should take you to default number for jump. Oh, gosh. Wait, that's a D100. Oh. You rolled a D100, got a one. You just very much won that. Good job. Oh, okay. You're trying to the get. first critical success in the game. If it rolled, I, I get that ones are like a, a good thing. Ones are critical successes. That is a critical success. You jump on that table like you were trained to. I fly onto the table, actually. It's actually like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, where she just kind of like <laughs> jumps straight up and drifts over. No, I freaking Mary Poppins the shit out of that. <laughs> Where's your umbrella, then? <laughs> You Mary Poppins the shit out of that table. I did. The snakes are not going to come out to you because they're not sure how to follow you after that one. <laughs> okay. okay. Maggie, you're next. Can I have your deck score? Um, 10. Okay, that works. So what are you going to do, Maggie? The snakes in front of you have been tossed across the room and Forrest has told you to run away. I'm going to scream and run the fuck away. Because fuck these snakes. I'm sick of these motherfuckers. I can't make that joke. It's just- <laughs> oh. I was, I was, I was going to like make that joke. But- I almost made that joke. <laughs> the monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. <laughs> so Maggie Bye. screams and runs towards the bartender. Harold, yep. what is your dex? Please don't say 14. I told you already. It's 10. I said, I told you already, it's 10, and you wrote it down. Well, for Maggie, but what about Harold? Oh. Oh, 11. So, that is the official initiatives for the rest of the game. Cool. So. Okay. So, Harold, it is your turn. There are two snakes looking at you. I am backing the fuck off. I'm actually going to go over here to make sure uh, all the civilians leave the room first. Okay. Um, That'll be the end of initiatives, and the snakes are going to move. That snake's going to go over there. And the snakes have moved. Um, And the snake is going to try to bite forest and succeed. Ah, crap. Take two points of damage to your health. And roll me, um, 
a con a con save below fifty. So how do con saves work? Do you just roll a d hundred? You roll a d one hundred, and um, well, like I said, it's a chart. It's your score versus um, the chart score. And it, um, if you look at the resistance table, it crosses into a single number, and you have to go below that number on a D100. So on his, he got a 96. He is getting toxic. Yep. Yeah. So Chris will not be moving next turn. He is paralyzed by I'm Snake. Picking him the fuck up. Um, the second snake is going to try to attack him. I should probably type slash roll. And that snake's going to get him. No, no zero. He does not get bit by a second snake. Okay. So that is those snakes. Um, one snake does get an attack at Maggie. So versus Maggie, we have one success on Maggie. Ah, crap. Hey, bartender, I need you over here to pick up this lady. <laughs> uh, can so, I pick up this one? <laughs> Maggie is taking one point of damage and is making me a constitution save below 50. Oh, good. And you have passed. You are not going to be paralyzed, Maggie. So we are back to the top of the initiatives. I would attack Leela, but she epic dove onto that table. <laughs> and Leela is at the beginning of the initiatives. Okay. Um, and I are any snakes on this table? Snakes are not on that table. Okay. So then can I, like try to look at them or like observe them in some way to like see if I know anything about them using yes. maybe a cult or um, art, well, maybe archaeology possibly. You would have to make a choice on that one. I okay. would not vote for different answers. I'm going to do a cult, which is a 35. So roll that. Okay. Okay, so you succeed on the occult role. You know these are the kind of snakes that the um, a lot of different kind of cults would cut open for the venom and okay. poison those with. Um, you know that they are very common in sacrificial rituals. All righty, sacrificial ritual snakes. Poison I guess sacrificial ritual snakes. Okay, Leela still has her move. Um. Let me jump. I'm going to take this door. I think. Yeah. So you go out there? Yep. Okay. And Keith? It is your initiative. All right. Can I put this dame behind me? And then shoot that snake? You can move her behind you. Um, we'll go ahead and put her back there. And you can roll your um, firearms handgun versus the snake. Um, you're going to find that that die is actually not next to the handgun itself. So. Oh, it's not it's next the to the handgun. It's on the skill list near the top. It's um, It should be firearms proficiency. Yeah. All right. Handgun. Wait, people are already betting that I'm going to be the first one to get... Oh, <laughs> they are. Have some um, you rolled an 80. Um, I actually don't know what your skill for handgun is. 
It's 50, so I missed. So you miss. Um, it goes ricocheting off, but you notice that that snake um, disappears. Ah! I got it. <laughs> Morris, it is your turn to roll me a constitution save. Don't worry, baby. I got this for you. You need me to roll the con save? Yes, please, Forrest. All right. You're still shooting for the target number of 50. All righty. Nope. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, you are paralyzed for your turn. Harold, it is your turn. All right, I'm picking this uh, bucko up. Okay, so you're going to roll me a strength roll because this guy is a bodybuilder. I mean, he is a moving tank. Okay. So my your strength is 14. So your strength is 14. You are actually rolling for... Um, you actually got a good chance, 45. I rolled an 88. You tried to pick him up, and you realize why it's called dead weight. Crap. <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we take a dead out of dead weight right now? I was going to say, is he dead? <laughs> he is not dead yet, but he weighs as much as he would. Uh, um, that, that is Hill's turn, Maggie. Yeah. Maggie, it is your turn. <clears throat> oh, the microphone is on like that. Um... Hmm. I, sp I don't. I don't have any weapons on me, so I'm gonna keep fucking running. <laughs> There's fucking snakes over here, okay? Not nah, cool. So I'm gonna just fucking run. I'm bolting. I don't even care. Okay. After Maggie's turn, you realize the snakes are all over the floor, um, and more of them disappear into the mass of snakes. The floor is now crawling with them. Um, give me a second to move my snakes. That crap. And we move the rest of my snakes. Snake at forest. Snake at forest. That's a line. That's not a snake. Whew. Snake and snake, and that one's going to vanish. Turns okay. Out, me dying first is a safe bet. <laughs> yeah. Um, Leela, you go out, and you realize there are even more snakes out there. There's a lot of snakes um, here? Oh. They, have, uh, they are all <laughs> over the ship. Cool. All right. And Maggie, you realize um, the same thing. Are any of them um, like... It is not your turn yet. I was just pointing out that the snakes appeared there, and I'm going to still roll on oh, Harold okay. now. Harold is not... Okay. Gonna... Okay. <coughs> So one snake on Harold fails completely. And second snake on Harold gets a hit. Um, You're going to take four points of damage from a snake bite and roll me a constitution save under 50. Yeesh. I feel like I have to say it again. Welcome to Call Cthulhu. Not going to get a chance to go insane. He's going to die. He succeeds his save. By a lot. And um, is not paralyzed for this round. Um, the rest of the snakes seem to be surrounding Forrest. Um, one of them has constricted around his ankle. Ah, crap. I can't shoot him now. Um... Leva, it is your turn at the top of the initiative. Okay, um, what is this in here? Is it a, like a little kitchen or something? Um, what you're in, it. 
when you come out into this area, it is a spot where they have prepped for the feast to come. They bring the food in from the kitchens into this area. Right. Um, going yeah. here is the actual kitchens. This area over here is the prep, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, okay. Um, are there snakes in it? There is a snake in here. There are, they are all over the floor crawling from what seems to be under every object. And the kitchen is slowly filling. Oh my. On the right side, you don't see any rodents. So, I mean. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, can I run up these stairs? Um, yes, you can. And that's probably going to take you to the second deck. Okay. Which, where would I come out? Um, I actually have no idea from this angle. I'm zoomed in. You go up those stairs, and we'll go ahead and put you up there. That'll work. Okay. We'll say you came out of are 20. snakes in here? Um, there are no snakes yet in that room. Okay, cool. Um, are there any snakes on the stairway behind me that I can see? They are following you. I was thinking about taking a picture. Okay, I'm going to take a picture um, yes. of one. They are um, like snakes in the plane. They are everywhere. It's not hard to find. Okay, them. let me use my photography, and I have a camera. I'm going to take a picture. Okay. Um, Keith, you are next. Here we go. After she makes her roll. Uh, can I let her do her roll first. I jumped again. Oh. Um, your hey, picture now. is blurry. Mark one of your film gone. I will. Because it is the 1920s. That's not never ending. All right. Okay, Keith, now it is your turn. Your snakes have vanished, but you see some in front of Maggie behind you. Ooh. They are coming out of the rooms. Oh. Baby, get back to the, to the stairs. They look fairly clear from here. All right, can I shoot past her and try and hit one? You can. All right. Yeah, less than 50. You will. Hit a snake. I'm going for the brown one because it looks different. Do your damage on the snake. Wow. And that snake is going to die. You watch as that snake splatters in front of you, Maggie. And uh -huh. it was a mess across that hallway. And can I run up and shove her behind me again? You can do that. Boom. And shove. As gently as I possibly can while still getting her behind me. Well, I mean, have you seen um, Night of the Living Dead, right? She's yeah. about as catatonic as that girl. Okay. Because the way she ran, she's about as murmuring as that girl, as far as you can tell. Um, Forrest? I have to roll again? You're rolling under a 25. Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, I was considering saving him, but... <laughs> you were considering it, thanks. Talk <laughs> 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 um, he has fallen over and gone stiff. Can we tell that? Does he have pants on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. No, no. <laughs> I'm gonna be really sad. Somebody has to save me because otherwise these haikus will never see the light of day, and you just don't understand. <laughs> I'm going to try. 